now that the sun is finally crested over the edge of my roof, <laughs> I can put my umbrella down and let the sun shine in, let the sun shine in. <laughs> you know, sometimes, in a humorous way, that's what we need to do, is to let the Son of God shine in on dark areas of our life, that we need to bring Him into the conversation. We need to make Him the priority of our observations whenever we get into any kind of contradiction or confrontation when the reality of bringing the sun into a situation will cause the light to shine upon what might be dark and whenever you're in a situation like that darkness has to flee at the light so whatever's behind the scenes causing this issue that might have come in front of you will flee when you bring Jesus into the picture it may not seem so at first but it's worked for me every time always involve Jesus in what you do and he'll see you through streams in the desert the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him 2nd Chronicles 16 9 God is looking for a man or woman whose heart will be always set on him who will trust him for all he desires to do God is eager to work more mightily now than he ever has through any soul. The clock of the centuries points to the eleventh hour. The world is waiting yet to see what God can do through a consecrated soul that's wholly his. Not the world alone, but God himself is waiting for one. One who will be more fully devoted to him than any who has ever lived before. Who will be willing to be nothing that Christ may be all who will grasp God's own purposes and taking his humility and his faith, his love and his power will, without hindering, continue to let God do exploits through him. There is no limit to what God can do with a man, providing he will not touch the glory. In an address given to ministers and workers after his 90th, 19th, 90th, 90th, yeah, 90th, in an address given to ministers and workers after his 90th birthday, George Mueller spoke thus to himself, of himself. I was converted in November 1825, but I only, became, I only came into full surrender of the heart four years later, in July 1829. The love of money was gone, the love of place was gone, the love of position was gone, the love of worldly pleasures and engagements was gone. God, God alone, became my portion. I found my all in him. I wanted nothing else. And by the grace of God, this has remained and has made me a happy man, an exceedingly happy man, and it led me to care only about the things of God. I asked affectionately, my beloved brethren, have you fully surrendered the heart to God? Or is there this thing or that thing from which you are taken up irrespective of God? I read a little of the scriptures before, but preferred other books. But since that time, the revelation he has made himself, made of himself, he has become unspeakably blessed to me, and I can say from my heart, God is an infinitely lovely being. Oh, be not satisfied until in your own inmost souls you can say, God is an infinitely lovely being. I pray to God this day to make me an extraordinary Christian. You know, the reality of what a Christian is supposed to be, according to Jesus, is one who knows him, who walks with him, who has his spirit living inside, but more than that, has Jesus inside, God dwelling within. And when we pursue God in that way, when we only want him, as opposed to what he can do, or ministries, or notoriety, or fame, or fortune, or worship, or whatever it may be, then we find a different kind of Jesus. We find a personal, tender, loving God that isn't afraid or isn't withholding, revealing himself in a more intimate, tender way that we may not have experienced before. 
but rather he may take us and lift us up into the heavens to gaze upon himself as he looks fully at us knowing that we make connection and you feel as you see God the overwhelming envelopment of what he is which is love in such a way that your physical body wants to die and cease to exist while your spirit wants to soar on the wants to bathe more than soar wants to stand in that presence and feel the warmth and the glow and the joy of knowing God in a personal intimate way Do you want the feeling? Do you want the joy? Or do you want God? There are times that I long for my Father in Heaven like more than I do my wife or any other relationship that I've ever known. There are times I long to see Him with all my heart and soul with every fiber of my being. And I wish I could say more so. Sometimes it's less so. But when I look, and when I think, and when I consider, I can't wait. I just can't wait. Can you? God, I will not, because it will be soon.